Ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I should thank you, Medis team, to inviting me to uh, to show these uh, the details of the results of, of our activity, and I'm really honored uh, to be in uh, such an interesting session. Uh, the, the title of the presentation is about the predictive value of adding a new technology, epicardial ultrasound, to transit time flow measurement in uh, coronary surgery. Uh, transit time flow measurement is a graph verification. Uh, everybody knows that uh, uh, it's something not offensive to uh, respect to surgeons. Uh, I mean that uh, uh, to know what happens inside of the anastomosis is something that should be done every case as we do in our institution. Uh, something about the state of the art of transit time flow measurement is the, definitely the most diffused method for intraoperative graph verification. It could be a benchmark for possible studies in vascular physiology. It is safe, quick, easily reproducible, not expensive. Is uh, accuracy is proven in uh, intraoperative uh, prediction coronary graph failure and there is some evidence that it may predict patient's outcome. Uh, I should stress that there is a more univocal interpretation of transit time flow measurement parameters after the introduction of cutoff values uh, uh, after 2006. But there are some drawbacks. Uh, uh, it is uh, there is an accurate and an accurate diagnosis of subcritical defects, as stated since 1998. Uh, its diagnostic accuracy is based on rock analysis of continuous variables. Uh, I mean the mean graph flow and the pulsatility index. They are not binary. I mean yes or not. That means that uh, the closer the parameter values to cutoff uh, limits the higher is the probability of a failing product prediction. So the uncertainty due uh, to some overlapping or not coincident cutoff values reported in literature, and there are some unknown determinants of flow, as uh, Professor Wolpert uh, stated since uh, the beginning of use of uh, this method. So all these drawbacks uh, lead to uh, the need of a diagnostic integration. So talking about diagnostic accuracy, in 2007, on the annual thoracic surgery, the group of Tokuda from Japan published this study about 261 patients, uh, 261 graphs, sorry, uh, evaluated by intraoperative transit time flow measurement uh, uh, in early, and uh, submitted to early postoperative coronary angiography within three months of surgery. The results were, were that, according to receiver operating characteristic curve, the rock analysis for the graft to left coronary arteries, a mean flow of 15 ml per minute or less, a pulsatility index by 5 or higher, and a backward flow by 4 or higher were found to be optimal cutoff criteria sorry, to predict early graft failure. Negative predictive values of these cutoff criteria ranged from 0.91 to 0.96, so very high, whereas positive predictive values ranged from 0.31 to 0 0.80. This means that if you uh, calculate the diagnostic accuracy, that is the product between negative predictive value and positive predictive value, it accounts for something like 0 0.4, so 40%. It is considered, it should be considered very low. I, um, I show you three cases from our recent experience. We started to use this new method uh, since uh, last August 2009. This is a case uh, of a 70 years old male submitted uh, to on pump uh, cabbage. The TTF uh, parameters within were within the limits considered in literature as normal. You can see on the right side of the slide a mean graph flow of 70 ml per minute, uh, a PI 1.2, and a back row flow by zero. So uh, this could have meant that the anastomosis, the, the graft was fully uh, functioning. Yeah, this is the angio before the operation. There is a stenosis downward the LAD, and uh, uh, at the control angiography after enzymatic release in day three, uh, the, there was evident the occlusion of uh, the proximal LAD. So, um, look, this is the uh, the angiographic feature, and at the revision, this was 
the, uh, the feature, the finding by the ECO. This is a thrombus onto the LED and the color flow mapping in uh, the, uh, I'll show you again, the color, the color flow mapping showed the, the stop in the uh, back of the anastomosis, very similar to, uh, to what showed the angiography. Uh, the patient was reoperated uh, five days later from the first procedure and ECHO's finding uh, showed the proximal occlusion as I showed in the previous slide. We did a coronary endarterectomy uh, recovering a very good uh, transit time flow measurement parameters. As you can see, 35 milliliters per minute of flow. And uh, this was the evidence uh, by ECHO's. Sorry, there's some mistake with... Uh, this is the evidence by ECO, uh, this is the B-mode uh, scanning, uh, this is the, the vein, this is the transfer scanning that's very important in the procedure and you can see that there's a full, completely full uh, flow into the graft. This is the uh, control angiography and you can see that the result is consistent with those showed interoperatively by ECOS. Uh, so the second case uh, is uh, uh, the case of a 65 years old female submitted to off-pump cabbage with a, a jumping anastomosis onto the LED, proximal and distal. The transit time flow, uh, flow measurement parameter with, were within the published limit except the mean flow. It was 8 milliliter per minute. Um, 8 milliliter per minute is uh, on, the, on the lower side of uh, what is considered to be normal. Uh, this, is, uh, this was the, the finding uh, to the distal anastomosis, distal to the distal anastomosis. And on a transfer scanning, uh, we were able to demonstrate the complete occlusion of the toe, the anastomosis, by a thrombus. Uh, while we were uh, deciding uh, what should have done uh, with this patient, the thrombus spontaneously solved. And this is demonstrated in uh, the, uh, the recordings uh, uh, distal each other far each other for just four minutes. And this is the appearance uh, of the spontaneous resolution of uh, the thrombus. Uh, you can see that on the on the distal uh, phase or the distal aspect of the coronary artery, there is a plaque. There is a plaque that probably was responsible. Uh, of the uh, thrombosis of the anastomosis as we used the, uh, the shunt inside of uh, coronary artery to perform, uh, to perform the procedure. And uh, just uh, the, it is the longitudinal view of the color from mapping uh, that is evident the, the plaque on the distal uh, side of uh, the anastomosis.